This is KTVO's Good Morning Heartland. Welcome back. Firearm deer season is right around the corner. Michael Collins with the Missouri Department of Conservation is here this morning to give us a refresher on what you need to know before you head out. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for coming on. So first of all, when is the start of the firearm deer season? Well, this, the beginning is the uh, November 12th and 13th. Mm -hmm. uh, then it goes to 22nd of November. Okay. Um, and what are some changes, if any, that we can expect to see this year? Well, a big change that uh, is going to be needs to be on everybody's radar is going to be the mandatory sampling in the CWD management zone. Mm -hmm. What this means is the opening week in a firearms deer season, which is November 12th and 13th, you'll have to present your deer to a sampling station within the CWD management zone, mm -hmm. which is the 29 counties that are in that zone there. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that this is mandatory, unlike it, in previous years where it was voluntary. If you wanted to uh, submit a sample, you were able to, but now uh, the department is asking that everybody who harvests a deer to do this. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Now, are there any uh, penalties or anything like that if, if you're caught with a deer and have not submitted a sample? Well, yes, it will be a violation. Okay but we'll handle it accordingly. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about permits. What type of permits do we need? Okay, during the firearms deer season, you'll need your, if you're a resident in Missouri, mm -hmm. you'll need your resident firearms deer or permits. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also purchase your antlerless permits mm -hmm. uh, for the firearms deer season. And while we're talking about permits really quick, uh -huh. we'll talk about, you see these numbers here along the margins of the permit. Right. Uh, in the past, you've been able to attach a transportation sticker uh -huh. to the uh, deer. However, this now it's going to be where you have to invalidate your permit by notching the day and month of the harvest. Okay. And uh, what is the limit when it comes to deer? Is it still one? It's uh, one antler buck during the firearms deer season. Uh, okay. Every county has a number of antlerless permits you can uh, fill during mm -hmm. the firearms deer seasons. Mm -hmm. Uh, you just need to look into the, the pamphlet here. Okay. And uh, every, like I said, there'll be a map in there. Every county has a limit on mm -hmm. antlerless permits you can use. All right. And these permits right here you have available at uh, offices, Department of yes. Conservation offices. Yep. And other places that might uh, sell uh, mm -hmm. permits and stuff as a well. A pretty so. common place would be Walmart that would okay. carry these. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Now let's go ahead and talk about uh, safety regulations. First of all, Hunter Orange is required during this time of season, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. A uh, Hunter Orange hat and vest or coat or jacket mm -hmm. has to be worn at all times while you're hunting during the firearms deer season. Of course, you know, not all of them come with badges. These are mm -hmm. the ones that I wear right. when I'm out in the field checking permits and checking mm -hmm. hunters during the fall. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I'm sure a lot of you have seen that there's also camouflage orange. Mm -hmm. However, that is illegal. Uh, you know, the purpose for camouflage is that it breaks up your pattern, your outline, so that you don't stick out as much. That's why that we don't allow the hunter orange with the camouflage on it to be to be worn. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's a really good thing to uh, to know, especially if you're heading out. Now let's go ahead and talk about other safety precautions to keep in mind. Obviously, people will have deer stands up, so we want to definitely touch base on tree stands and safety harnesses. Correct? Absolutely. You know, studies show that one out of every three hunters uh, fall at least one time in their hunting career. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, with 500,000 hunters in Missouri, it's, mm -hmm. it's just the number of potential accidents is, right. you know, very high. You know, typical tree stand will be anywhere from 12 to 15 feet, depending mm -hmm. on how high you want to put it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a fall from that distance can cause a lot of damage, you know, severe injuries, uh, possibly death. Mm -hmm. And if you're lucky, you could go away with minor injuries. Mm -hmm. And another thing to keep in mind, which I really like this, um, you think people would think about it, but a lot of people forego this. And that's just to have a, a generic safety first aid kit with you as well. Absolutely. You know, the one I have is a lot more elaborate than a typical person would have. Mm -hmm. But you never know. There's a lot of different scenarios that you could run through your head that you might need a first aid kit. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, uh, you know, if you're field dressing your deer and you accidentally cut yourself with your knife. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a first aid kit, you can bandage it up, use a tourniquet if you need to, or uh, they've got some stuff called quick cloth that you could pack in there and mm -hmm. uh, take the bleeding away. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, yes. Uh, also, another thing that we encourage hunters to do is to formulate a hunting plan. Mm -hmm. Basically, notify somebody that you're going to be in this specific location and when to expect you back so that in the circumstance that you don't show up on time or 
in the circumstance that something happens, that person can automatically know where you're going to be and send help your way as soon as possible. Okay, perfect. And uh, to make everything easier for everyone out there is we'll link up everything with the Missouri Department of Conservation. I know that their website is very hands-on and very user-friendly. So if they have any questions or concerns, they're more than welcome to click on that. And we'll also provide information with um, the phone number to Missouri Department of Conservation as well. All right, yeah. well, thank you so much, Michael, for coming on. Thank you for having me. And we'll be right back.